Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. Generally like to talk a lot of bollocks. Tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about an age old classic. We're going to be talking about risk. And in this game, you will be moving your troops around the map. You'll be rolling a few dice to destroy your opponents in the hope you can win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like what we don't like and we come back and we tell you whether or not risk is still worth playing hang on a minute 64 years after it was first released in 1959 so remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button and all that youtube bullshit see you after this bollocks risk how do you play this game so Risk is a war game that was first released ages ago in 1959. There has been a bazillion and one different versions of Risk, but we are talking about the box standard version, not the original version, but the later version. Our copy is from 2000. So first thing you're going to do is you put a board in the centre of the table, like you always do, right? Each player is going to get an army, and dependent on the amount of players, you're going to get a certain amount of units to put on the board. Don't get confused between the different types of units. They're all the same, but you have got infantry, cavalry, and artillery artillery is 10 units cavalry is five and infantry is one right but they all function the same so two ways of getting your units out on the board before you play right you can distribute the risk cards amongst all the players and then you just go through your hand of cards and put one troop on each territory and then you can distribute your remaining units on any of those territories or you can just go around the table start with the first player and then put a unit on one territory and so on and so forth so the first thing that you can do on your turn is you can muster reinforcements so you'll look at the number of territories that you control and you'll divide that by three and round up and that's the amount of units that you get further to this if you control a whole continent then you will get an extra number of units so if you control africa for instance i think you get two units for that and if you control asia you're going to get a lot more also you could trade in risk cards throughout the game when you take territories you're going to be getting risk cards depending on what picture they got on there so if you've got one of each you're going to get 10 extra units to put on the board in areas that you control so next thing you can do on your turn is you have the option to attack you will announce where you are attacking from and you'll announce who you are attacking you can only attack with a maximum of three units but you've got to be able to leave somebody behind to look after your stuff right so if you've only got one unit in a territory you can't attack depending on how many units you're going to be attacking with you'll take that number of dice up to a maximum of three and then the defender will take up to a maximum of two dice you both roll your dice and then you compare the result with the highest roll and the second highest roll whoever wins will lose a troop and then you keep going until somebody eliminates all of their troops yeah the attacker can withdraw halfway through the battle and they can focus on another territory if they want or they could just retreat back into their little hidey hole so once you resolve the combat you'll be able to fortify your positions you'll be able to move one units out of one territory into an adjacent territory right as part of setup everyone's going to be getting one of these mission cards this will tell you what you've got to achieve to win the game it might be the case that you have to take over two different continents or you have to destroy another opponent or you might just have to occupy 24 territories but you'll keep going around the table you'll keep moving and attacking you'll keep trying to destroy your opponents take it over as many territories as you possibly can and then the player who completes their mission first will be the winner of risk do we like about risk so the first thing that we really like about this game is that it was the first ball game that we know of to offer the opportunity of world domination that's what people used to do back in the day in 1950s and 1960s even up to like, i suppose the 1980s people used to play until all of the other opponents were eliminated and in a six player game that is batshit crazy right but if it weren't for risk right you wouldn't be playing all of these area control games and all of these war games today and a lot of people that love these war games certainly wouldn't be playing those games if it weren't for this game right okay it is unfairly lumped in with Monopoly and other shitty Hasbro games but this one isn't all that bad right it's really unfair that it gets lumped in with all that dog shit so yeah Risk was the original not necessarily the best but it was the original so the second thing that we really like about Risk is that the mission cards were a decent addition way back sort of 25 maybe 30 years ago yeah like we said just a minute ago people used to play this until all the other armies were obliterated and Hasbro looked at this and thought well that's just bloody stupid isn't it let's introduce a mechanism in this game that is going to make the game play in about an hour, right? So they introduce mission cards, don't have to take over the old world. You've just got to do a little bit of territorial pissings here and there. And it works really, really well. So yeah, the mission cards, they sort the game out much. Final thing we really like about Risk is that alliances can be forged with other players along the way. One of the things we like to do in this game is to write down little post-it notes and secret messages to other players saying, if you go over there and do that, then I won't kick your ass over in Yakutsk, right? I suppose me being a grey and dusty old luddite, 
bollock to use pen and paper, but you millennial fuckers can use your mobile phones or WhatsApp if that's how you like to wank yourself off. So yeah, it does lead to a bit of banter, a little bit of secret information and that. It's not really a house rule, is it? But you do get to play a sort of meta game with this old dinosaur. So what don't we like? About risk. So the first thing that we don't like about this game is that there's not enough infantry units in the box, right? Played this the other day. Well, fuck, played this 100 billion times, right? We played this the other day and I spread myself so thin over Asia that I run out of infantry units to place and I couldn't make them up with any cavalry because there was three to four units in each territory. So I didn't really know what to do here. And it's a real shame because when you open the box up for the first time, all you fucking noobs out there, you're going to be looking at them cannons thinking, I can't wait to get them on the board. And they don't really do anything special. It's just 10 sodding units. It's, right? it's just a big phallic object to look scary so you can wave your dick in someone's face, right? So yeah, even though there's 360 fucking miniatures in this box, it's not enough. I want more! Second thing we don't like about Risk is that combat is still a little bit unfair. It's just a case of chucking a die. Even though the attacker is going to lose on a tie, right? The defender will always roll two dice and you'd be a bit stupid to go in to a heavily defended area with only two units, right? So the odds are stacked in favour of the attacker, but then again, I suppose if they weren't, this game would drag on forever and that's why it does so the third thing we don't like about risk is that australia is still a real fucking bastard to take over there's always that one fuck who wants to do a bit of turtling in australasia and be like a turd that you've been saving up for a week and just sort of poke your tongue out when things get a little bit too hot down there you know if you look at the board you'll see that north america is attached to asia and africa is attached to europe and south america but little old australia is only attached to asia and there's not really any way to go in there and do over those bread thieves right so yeah they've had 63 years to fix this fucking issue and haven't they just been playing with their willy for six decades haven't they so to summarize is risk still worth your time and bother today and in the future so we're gonna say yeah right fight me Risk is unfairly ranked alongside Monopoly and some of the other dog shit Asbro games, yeah? And it's sort of regarded as an abomination in the tabletop gaming community, but nothing could be further from the truth. Risk is an archaic game, right? It's it's unfair, yeah? It's dusty and it stinks of old ladies' piss, but it does offer a couple of hours of just dice chucking, banter round the table, accusations, chucking secret notes at each other, right? Don't listen to those haters. Pick up a copy on eBay for a couple of quid and try it, right? just give it a go if you don't like it take it down to charity shop and just act like a fucking good samaritan that you think you are yeah so there you go that is risk remember if you knew it then please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit see you next time